In this video, I will show you how integration by parts work. Since integration by parts is very much related to the product rule from differentiation, let's look at that first. If you have two functions, u of x, you multiply with each other, times v of x, and you want to differentiate them, you first differentiate the first function, multiply it by the second function not differentiated, then add the second function differentiated times the first function not differentiated. So we get u prime of x times v of x plus u of x times v prime of x. This also works for fractions. Then you just have one term is to the power of minus one. Okay, integration by parts, we can just integrate both sides. Let's do that. And the left hand side is obviously just u of x times v of x. If we use that, we can also rearrange it to have an integral on the left-hand side. The integral here, let's take that to the left-hand side, and we get integral of u prime of x times v of x. dx is equal to u of x v of x minus, since we put this the other side, it's positive, so this becomes negative, u of x v prime of x dx plus some constant. Now, let's assume you have a u function and a v function multiplied with each other that you want to integrate. What you can say then is, well, it is one of the functions integrated minus the integral of this expression, but this time the other function differentiated, so u prime here. How does that help? Well, we, didn't, we really did just replace one integral with another, right? But well, what if our v prime of x is equal to some constant d? If it is equal to some constant d, we have no issue integrating that. It's just d times the integral of u of x. Straightforward. Let's apply this rule. Let's integrate x squared e to the x. Okay. We need to choose a u and a v, or u prime and a v, to do so. Which one do we pick? Unfortunately, there's no general rule. Most of the time, it's useful to have e to the power of x as our u prime, but that's not always the case. What we can do is we can differentiate both sides and see what happens after a few iterations. Or if at the first step we get this. Because whichever of the two we pick as v will end up with its derivative here. Hmm, okay. So we get 2x here, we get 2 and then 0. Here you get e to the x, e to the x, and it stays there. This does not change. If I keep differentiating that, I get 2 and then 0. That sounds like a good idea. Problem is, though, this is 2x. This is not 2. So what do we do? Well, we can repeat it. We can do it again, and then we should get 2. Let's do that. So x squared is our v, so we get x squared e to the x, because integrating and differentiating e to the x always gives us the same, minus the integral of 2x e to the x dx plus some constant. Never forget the constant. Now we need to do it the second time because we haven't simplified that yet. So we do the integral of 2x e to the x dx is equal to as we've seen here, when I wrote all the derivatives, we want here to have 2x to be the v this time. So we get 2x e to the x 
differentiating e to the x doesn't change, minus the integral of 2 e to the x dx plus some new constant. Well, this integrating is easy because e to the x is just e to the x and the constant is just a constant. And we have this expression. So we can replace it up here. Now minus this expression, which is this, so we get minus 2x e to the x. This becomes plus 2e to the x plus a constant. But we already have a constant. Adding and subtracting constants from each other leaves a constant plus e, some constant. Okay. How do I now make sure, given I added and subtracted some terms, that I didn't make an error somewhere? I did quite some algebra here. Well, I can just differentiate that. And it should give me this expression here in the integral. Let's do that. Again, we have terms that are multiplied, two functions multiplied, so we need to use the product rule. First term is 2x e to the x plus x squared e to the x minus 2e to the x minus 2x e to the x plus 2e to the x. Constant drops out, doesn't depend on x. Okay, that's five terms, not one. Well, but a lot of them cancel out. 2x e to the x minus 2x e to the x minus 2e to the x plus 2e to the x, and we're left with x squared times e to the x. Okay, so we found our solution. Let's do a second example. In the second example, Unfortunately, this will not work. So, let our second example be the integral of the cosine of x times e to the x dx. Hmm. Which one is u and v? Let's do the same thing we just did. Well, e to the x remains e to the x. The root of the cosine is minus the sine. Then I get cosine. And it keeps on going, flipping between cosine and sine. This never goes to a constant. This never simplifies. What do I do in that case? Well, let's just do it anyway. Okay? Let's just deploy this method and see what happens. Um, let's take the cosine to be v. So we get cosine x e to the x minus the integral of differentiating that. Get to the plus. Plus some constant. Note the plus, since the derivative of the cosine respect to x is minus the sine, the minus here becomes a plus. Okay, this didn't really help. Let's do it again. So we got the sine of x times e of x, and we want to take derivative here. Let's again take the sine as v. Why not? So we get sine x e to the x minus the derivative of the sine cosine of x e to the x dx plus some constant. Hmm. That didn't really help either at first sight. But if we have a closer look, you note that Wait, I want to know what the integral of cosine times e of x is. That's the same expression as we have up here. We can use that to solve it. How do we solve it? Well, we know this expression is this. If we plug it in, we have the cosine in here, which you can take to the other side, and then we solved it. 
Let's do that. So we get two times the cosine. Take this to the other side. Replace that. So we get the cosine of x e to the x plus, since it's plus this term, sine x e to the x plus two constants. They will be equal to some third constant if we add them up. Okay. But I want it the integral of cosine x e of x, not two times that. Well, let's divide by two, both sides. Note the constant divided by two is still a constant. And we got that. Again, let's double check because cosine sine switches sines, but not always, and so on and so forth. Let's double check that this is the true solution. Differentiate respect to x. Again, we need to use the product rule. So we have the cosine of x, that becomes minus sine of x e to the x over 2 plus cosine x e to the x over 2. Second term plus cosine x e to the x over 2 plus sine x e to the x over 2. And the constant drops out. If I look at this term, I have minus sine x e to the x over 2 and plus sine x e to the x over 2. And I have twice cosine x e to the x over 2 summed up gives us just cosine of x e to the x, which is what we wanted in the first place. Thank you for watching.